Okay, it looks like we've got a hybrid here. This is, says Kenmore, then it says KitchenAid up there, right? Could be a KitchenAid, Kenmore, Whirlpool. As long as it's this kind of style here, we got the two screws in the front. We got the split here. It's pretty much going to be the same as this one. So if you take this uh, agitator off, and we look down here, see this actual, there's a collar on this that holds this tub up and it goes over these splines on the spin tube thing here so this collar is actually shot on this one so basically we need to unscrew this take this off take the tub out put a new collar underneath here and uh, that's what would solve the problem it may wash your clothes kind of you know with a light load but it wouldn't spin very well um, may not spin at all so that's uh it's not very common it's most commonly you're going to have a bad drive coupler which is underneath here uh, where the motor uh, connects to the transmission okay so this these clips basically hold these hold this in here just stick a screwdriver in there and pry these up and then these things here just pull these up like so and you can pull this off and then take that nut off and pull this out and then put a new collar in there okay so what I've done is I've heated up a little bit put a little bit of oil on the thread area you don't want to get any on the center shaft here the spin tube you want to get it on this area here <clears throat> And in some cases, you just have to cut this nut off because uh, if you're if you're pounding on this uh, and it don't come off and that that the collar just spins, then you have to cut the nut off. Basically, unfortunately, and then you have to get another nut. So what I tried to do is I tried to hold this back with my foot um, while I unscrew this by trying to unscrew it. And uh, it just spins. So, what I think I'm gonna have to do is cut that nut off, put a new one on. See that tub is that tub will come off of there. Basically, I can lift. I should be able to lift it right up because there's nothing really holding it except for that collar, and that collar is pretty well worn out. So sometimes you have to cut this nut off to get that off. Uh, probably 75% of the time, you don't need to cut that nut off. Usually, you can just what I, I do is instead of hammering on the nut directly, I put this over it and then hammer on this um, rather than boogering up that nut. Once you get that nut off, then you can pull the you can pull the basket out anyway. But uh, um, I want to make sure that these are good. So there's little splines on that spin tube. These splines. What you can do, if it's not too bad, you can bend these splines out just a little bit, because you don't want to put you don't want to put too much stress on that little spline because if you bust that spline, then the new collar won't have anything to grab onto. So that's what I do. I just I usually usually the spin tube is fairly decent, so. I can just bend these out so that the uh, collar will grab onto it. Guys, there's your disclaimer. And so, yeah. Put the new collar on, send in okay, reverse so order. I didn't have to cut this off. I, I just kind of tapped on it and finally came off. So, and this actually has kind of like, there's a, a cover of basically. There's some, you can see it's almost like a cap with a spline, but that's worn out on this one. And here's the two splines on this shaft here. So basically, the new collar has to have a spline on it. So that that spline sits in between this spline here. And so, 
yeah that's how that works basically um and i think this spin tube here we can salvage it just basically needs to be bent out you have to be careful when you bend it out you can't bend it out too far because you'll break it and so yeah it's just kind of really touch and go here guys um so yeah it's, that those have to be bent out if you bend them too far you'll break them and you have to get a whole new spin tube you can't actually use like some jb weld in there to glue the collar on to the spin tube um but you have to get a good spin tube first the spin tube is worn out so so the new spin tube will have splines on it that line up here uh, so once you get a new collar on there tighten it up you're good as new okay i was able to bend these uh these little splines out a little bit basically i just took a screwdriver and tapped it in there and then uh the little splines sort of bent out a little bit and that should be enough for the collar to grab onto and then we can epoxy it on loosen up this uh scuff up this a little bit scuff up the uh the collar and that should be fine okay so i found one this is a good used one and you can see it has some splines on the sides, right? And then this one's the worn out one. It has zero splines, right? So, we'll be able to clean this up. And I'm actually going to clean that up a little bit too. With some steel wool. And then I'll put a little bit of epoxy on it. Just to keep it. This is part of a design that allows this part to become sort of like a fuse in the system so <clears throat> this thing go basically goes out when you're running too big of loads right it's either this or the drive coupler on the motor the drive coupler is sort of in between the motor right there between the motor and the transmission and then that drive coupler is designed to be a fuse in the system so that when people overload it, it doesn't burn out the motor and cause a fire, right? And so this is theoretically a part of the fuse in the system, but the drive coupler would normally go out before this did. And so that, so they have a double, it's basically a double fuse system. It's a mechanical fuse is basically what it is. So let's put it all back together. Okay, before you get too wild on this one, I want to make sure it's going to fit on here okay. This one I actually heated up. So that one should fit on there okay. So it's on there pretty tight. So you gotta make sure the splines are lined okay, up. Okay, so there it is. Uh, got the splines lined up. And uh, I got a little bit of epoxy on it. It's gonna hold a little bit better. Okay, so this is gonna be kind of a continuation on this. Uh, this is what they call an old school direct drive got this kind of top the split here this kind of back um, two clips on the front after you take the two screws out of the console and so this one here basically has a failing clutch so it just won't spin very well and so we're going to take this transmission out and take a look at it you have to take the agitator off first and then you can take these three uh, half inch nuts off and pull that transmission out of there okay so this one i had a hard time pulling it all the way out but all we need is a little space to grab this basically uh, this is sitting inside there it's got that little spring on it and you see this clutch is kind of worn out the brass rings are rubbing on this one at least i'd say we can do something with that Okay, so here's what I've done with this, uh, taking some JB Weld, and basically I've rebuilt this clutch. You can see the little pads I put on it, 
in between. Kind of lift those up a little bit. Add some material to them. Yeah, that's what I've done. And so this material that I use, this actually came off a water heater. It's uh, the uh, protector for the water heater control. It's like a uh, fire resistant, whatever. And uh, it's similar to the material on this clutch. But uh, yeah, that's uh, okay. So, so I did. I got that in. So I pulled this out. I was able to pull the transmission out some more. I'm not gonna pull it all the way out because that wire and stuff. So I got the clutch back in, and uh, what I'm gonna do. I noticed that damn there's a crack here. So there was a crack here, and the guy I got it from didn't even notice it. He was upstairs, and uh, just a side note here: <clears throat> uh, this machine was probably uh, used and used. I mean, I would imagine they've got like at least four people in the family, and they used the heck out of this thing. So the reason why I could tell this was leaking, and I've already put some sealer on it, I already put some E6000 on it. And uh, I may pull the tub out and do the E6000 from the inside as well. So when these things get moved around and or when the, the brake is not lubed or it sticks, what, what happens is it will stop abruptly and crack this. And or if you're moving this, this thing here will uh, take some jarring and then crack the tub. And then it will leak. So, uh, yeah. Um, and what I normally do is I'll cut these back so they're not protruding. And particularly this one that's got a crack in it. Um, you look over here, these ones are fine, you can tell they've taken a little bit of a beating here, and here, but there's no cracks, so, uh, yeah, this, this one here was, uh, <laughs> what do they say, the, uh, uh, Mercy Project here, uh, love affair with these, uh, direct drives for me. Um, they're usually pretty good machines. I have this joke that I say that these were like the Toyota Corollas of the washing machines and um, Just between me and you They're not getting much easier to work on and uh, At this point in time at least So let's put her back together and okay. see what we can do So I cut that back so it's out of the way so that thing Because it's a weak one. We got a little crack in it and so it's kind of cut back. Look at that one, that one, so. And then, uh, I just noticed there was a pin on this connection here that was a little rusty. Sometimes you can look in here and see corroded pins. And I cleaned that up. And so, at this point, <coughs> this bottom area is done. I might take a little oil and lube these springs up a little bit. any of these dry springs lube them up and got to put this water pump back on and I find those clips and uh, that's about it for the bottom okay got the tub out again so I was gonna look at this uh, this crack here so you can see it's about four inches long it's got a split here there's that stay that I cut off that piece right there it's actually cracked right at the tip so we just clean it up with some steel wool get it real good clean alcohol and then uh, put a couple of coats of E6000 on it okay got it roughed up cleaned up a little bit actually I took some sandpaper Hey, there's you. You and me. It's time for the E. So that's your Kenmore KitchenAid Whirlpool whatever trip tip for the day. Thanks for watching. If you need any help, you can contact me 707 599 4489. Bass Tech 72588 at Gmail.